Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'm going to try and answer the question, just how stable is the brand new DJI Action 2? And I thought, what better way to test that <laughs> than to strap it to the hood of my car alongside the original Osmo Action and the DJI Pocket 2, and then drive it up and down this pothole ruddy road out here in the middle of the woods and see how they handle it. Now, I have a camera in the top of the car focused on the three of them so you can see exactly what the road's doing, and then we'll look at the footage side by side. Now, to be fair, the Pocket 2 has got a stabilized gimbal on it, so I expect that's going to be buttery smooth because the gimbal is going to compensate for the movement of the car. The original Osmo Action is running the Rocksteady 1.0 version, which is not as sophisticated as the new Rocksteady 2 that's on the Action 2. So that'll be interesting to see how much that's been improved. But I don't know what's going to happen. I just hope that they stay on the hood of my car and don't go flying off in the lake over there. So stay tuned and we'll take a look at the footage. And I'll have other tests after this. Now I'm using the Action 2 with the lanyard kit to show you what some hands-free recording looks like. And remember, when you're using the lanyard kit, you want to slide the backing plate on the inside of your shirt, snap the bracket on the camera, and then magnetically attach the camera to the actual backing plate, squeezing your shirt in between. And that'll keep it nice and steady on your shirt. If you just drape the lanyard over your shirt, snap the camera on it, it's going to swing all over the place and you're going to get crazy footage. Anyway, my plan is, I've got it on, I'm recording. I've got some divots in the road behind me. Now, I know it's not a mountain, but I'm an older guy, so I gotta be a little bit careful. And my plan is to wander over there in and among those divots, just to show you what it looks like when that camera's recording to see if that horizon steady really hangs in there. And then I'll come back, and if you're lucky, I may do a couple of ninja moves at the end of this. But anyway, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna walk over this way. Pretty level ground right here. And right over here, it's starting to go downhill a little bit. There we go. Now, of course, I'm going down further than I need to just to simulate bouncing as you're walking. I'm bouncing this way. All right, this is a mess down here. Let's see what happens when I walk through this. Okay, I'm really unsteady because there's a lot of different hills. Now, what if you're a guy that, uh, or a woman that has a really bouncy gait? Maybe you're walking down the road and you're bouncing like this when you're walking. Let's see what Horizon Steady does with that. And now for the pièce de résistance, here's a couple of ninja moves. Enough of that nonsense. Anyway, I'm gonna go back and look at the footage and we'll see just how well Horizon Steady does to keep that image completely stable when I'm moving around. Okay, in this last test, we're really gonna put the Action 2 through its paces because I've been racking my brain trying to come up with a way to show you just how good the stabilization is. And I got to thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I could strap the Action 2 to a balloon, let it float up in the air, and see how it handled that third dimension? Because up till now, all the testing I've done has been two-dimensional, it's been terrestrial. I've been walking around, I've been driving around, and it really only has to handle two dimensions. But if I strapped it to a balloon and let it float up in the air, that would be cool to see how it handles that extra dimension. And then I got to thinking even further, wouldn't it be cool if I could strap it to a drone? Then I thought, no, that's crazy talk. Who would strap the Action 2 to a drone? I mean, the camera's expensive, the drone's expensive, but in the name of science, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I've got my brand new Air 2S over there. I've got the Action 2 on top of it. Now, I haven't tested this yet, 
as with most things, I come up with a wacky idea, I get out in the field and I test it. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. I'm gonna spin up the drone, I'm gonna lift off, and hopefully it doesn't just do a face plant right on the mat. But I'm gonna start the recording on the camera. It's already started. I'm gonna start the recording on the drone and we'll compare the stabilized gimbal on the Air 2S to the footage on the Action 2 and we'll see what happens. This will be kind of a cool experiment. All right, here we go. And man, am I nervous. All right, let me spin up the props. All right, that's pretty safe. Nothing so bad so far. Now, now I'm gonna lift off, here we go. Oh, it's a little top heavy. Oh, no, no, it's stabilized. All right, so it's flying pretty well and the camera's on the top of it. Let me take it downfield and see what happens. Oh man, please don't flip over. All right, it's flying pretty good. You go this way a little bit. Let me take it up a little bit. Oh man, I'm so nervous. I am so nervous. All right, let me get downfield that way a little bit. It's easier to keep an eye on it with those lights blinking. All right, so now we're gonna head down that end of the field. And boy, the footage is fantastic on this camera. Oh, don't hit the tree, Rick, don't hit the tree. You know, one thing I'm noticing with the extra weight, it's a little bit lazy, but it's still flying really well. All right, so let me bring it back because I'm worried that it's it's over there and I, I it's too far away from me. I get nervous when stuff like that gets away from me. All right, so that's that, let me get it back. Let's fly over this way a little bit. Oh, this is really nice. I can't wait to see what the footage looks like on the action too. It's, it's, it's a strange contraption. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to fly it in really close so you can get a look at it because, man, this just looks strange. All right, come on around this way, and then let me fly in and give you a look at what it, what it actually looks like. This is like a mad scientist move right here. All right, so... <laughs> All right, there you go. And there's the Action 2 on the top of it now. This is crazy. Uh, it's sitting right up there, and it's doing just fine. And the drone is flying rock-solid level, so it's compensating for the extra weight and it's writing itself, which is amazing. All right, let me spin it around and land it, because uh, the more it's up there, I'm terrified. All right, nice and slow. I got it in cinema mode. I've slowed down all the responses. All right. I can't wait to see this footage. And boy, this landing's gonna be tricky. All right, let's see how I do. With the camera on top, I'm gonna land it. All right, there we go. Boom, right on the mat. <laughs> I always like to do that. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to the studio. Of all the filming I did today with the Action 2, this is the one that I can't wait to see because that should be rock solid. I really want to see how it handles that sort of swaying in the breeze when it's up there in the air. So anyway, stay tuned, and I'll come back with some conclusions at the end. But man, I'm having so much fun with this new Action 2. It's small enough to take with me pretty much anywhere I need to. It magnetically attaches to stuff, and I'm just having a ball with it. So stay tuned. We'll get back to the studio, and we'll look at some of the footage. Well, I finally made it back to the shop, and boy did I have a lot of fun today testing the stabilization of the brand new Action 2 camera and comparing that to two other popular DJI cameras, because anytime I can get my hands on brand new technology like this and get to spend an afternoon out in the field with it, putting it through its paces to see if it can actually do what the manufacturer claims it can do is a really good day for me. Now, before I get into the results, because I've had a chance to review the footage, I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between these cameras. This is the Osmo Action, the original one. This is the Action 2, and this is the DJI Pocket 2. Now, these two use electronic image stabilization. I've talked about that before in the channel. Essentially what that is, is the camera will overshoot the image, and then based on the movement of the camera, the gyros, it can sense how it's moving, will move the image electronically to compensate for the movement of the camera. So as the camera moves, inside the electronics are moving the image to compensate for that to keep it still. Now the quality of how it does that is really what separates most action cameras out there because all action cameras have some form of electronic image stabilization, but the algorithms that anticipate the movement and can move to the next position smoothly and quickly really separate how well they do that. Now, this one uses the Rocksteady 1 technology. This is using Rocksteady 2, and that's based on the software and the algorithms. And DJI's had a lot of experience in understanding how cameras move, how to anticipate where they're gonna move next, and how to move that image smoothly in a very nice way to get it to that second position. And that really is something you notice. As humans, we can definitely see those micro movements and some of the less expensive cameras, it tends to be very jerky or worse, they can't handle quick movements. So when that jittering happens, like it was on the roof of that car, it can't handle that and it can't compensate for it. So you get this very unnatural movement of that image and you can notice it pretty clearly. 
To my eye, both of these cameras did a phenomenal job. I have to say that I felt like the Action 2 was a little bit smoother, and it just seemed more natural. It was almost like I was flying down that road looking at the footage from the Action 2. Now, the Pocket 2 is an electronic gimbal. It's actually got a gimbal that moves the sensor around, so physically it's moving the sensor in three directions. It's still sensing how the camera's being moved, but it's moving the sensor to sort of compensate for the movement of the camera. And if I'm being honest, between the three of them, it seemed like the Pocket 2 on the roof of that car really had the hardest time compensating, especially for the small jitters, because when I hit those little ruts on the side of the road or I went through one of those big holes where there's water flashing up and everything, it seemed like the Pocket 2 had a hard time compensating for that because the rig that was on the hood of that car was moving around a little bit. Even though I tightened it up as much as I could, it still had a little bit of jitter in it. And the Pocket 2, if you're looking closely, you can pick that up a little bit. So this is great when you're walking around. So from a terrestrial perspective, you can't beat a gimbal. If you're walking around trying to get smooth footage on a vacation or walking through a particular area, maybe surveying a house or something, this one works phenomenally well because that gimbal can handle those movements to give you that buttery smooth um, footage on there. Whereas these two, I think are much better for those micro movements that you get when something's shaking on your hood. So anyway, to my eye, I thought this one had the hardest time with it. This one did an excellent job with it. That Rocksteady one is, is pretty phenomenal, but the Rocksteady two to me, was just a step above. It was just that much better. And the other cool thing is, not that this had a hard time with the Horizon, but this one I think did a better job of keeping everything level based on sort of its internals and understanding what's going on with the Horizon. So that Horizon Steady feature really helped a lot there. Now the second test was probably more real world when I snapped it onto the lanyard, and that's how you're going to use it an awful lot. I love the fact that it's tiny. I snapped it on my shirt, and quite honestly, once it mounted on my shirt, I almost forgot that it was there. It was just that light. It felt real natural in my chest. And I didn't want to do one of those tests where I'm walking up a mountain because number one, as I said, I'm a little older, so it would really be funny to see me tumble down the mountain. But that's not a real test because walking up stairs, walking up a mountain, that's kind of a linear movement, right? It's not a lot of uh, interrupting movements. It's sort of nice and smooth. You're just going up at an angle. What I was trying to do there was to find a road that was uneven or an area that was uneven that I could walk through where we were bouncing around and sort of, you know, I was aggressively moving myself. I was exaggerating the movements a little bit to see how it would handle it. I thought it did really well. And I know the ninja thing at the end was kind of a bonus, but I thought it did a phenomenal job of sort of not only keeping the horizon level, but smoothing out all the movements of me walking. Because I really tried to exaggerate that bouncing when I was walking down the street. And I'm telling you, it kept it like rock solid in there. Now, the third test <laughs> was sort of a late addition. And we've been kind of brainstorming on this for a while. Because remember, it's got a magnetic mount on it. So we had a lot of conversations about, should we bolt it to a drone and send it up in the air? And I'm telling you, I was one of the holdouts where I said, let's just do it. And everybody's like, wait a minute, it's got a very powerful magnet in there. If you put that thing on the top of the drone, it's definitely going to mess with the compass. And that drone could take off and just be gone over the horizon. And I'm like, we got to give it a shot. So we bolted on the drone and... To be fair, it did a good job. I thought it did a phenomenal job of, of sort of um, normalizing that footage. It was nice and stable. It kept the horizon level. So when I moved the drone side to side, it compensated for that. So really what it showed me was that the horizon level worked really well. The thing I have to tell you, though, is it did... It made the drone a little bit lazy because of the extra weight, but the one thing I did notice is the magnets definitely affected the compass because when I sent it out in the field, it seemed to drift a little bit. It wasn't as sure of its position as you'd normally get with a drone up in the air, so I'm not going to recommend you do that. Now, I'll tell you one other funny thing I wasn't going to share with you, but I thought it'll make a funny blooper at the end of this. I had the bright idea because we saw that drifting take place and we brought the drone down and I said, how can we compensate for that? And I came up with the bright idea of, of adding a selfie stick. Why don't we just put a little eight inch selfie stick on that mount and put this on the top of that selfie stick? And everybody was like, no, Rick, don't do it. That's going to be a huge mistake. I'm like, let's give it a shot. So it wasn't actually in the video, but I'm going to run it at the end of the clip so you can see it. It was an unmitigated disaster and everybody gave me a hard time afterwards. And I'm like, all right, I got to try stuff, right? We didn't break anything. It was just a lot of fun to do it. But anyway, overall, I have to say again, electronic image stabilization, it's an art. It's more alchemy than anything. It's, it's a science because it's digital programming, but having the artistic ability to blend in different frames and move them around smoothly so that it seems natural is a real art. And with the uh, Rocksteady 1, they did a phenomenal job. The Rocksteady 2... To me, it's as good or better than a gimbal, and it's in a tiny little camera. So I think DJI has done everything they said they were going to do with this product. I'm sure it's even going to get better over time because they're constantly pushing firmware out for their products. But for me, 
It's small, it's portable, it's easy to bring along, it's lightweight, it's got phenomenal footage, and it does amazing stabilization on the camera with the electronic image stabilization. So everything they said it can do, I feel like it can do. So I hope you enjoyed this clip. Uh, I've got a bunch more coming, so if you want to stay tuned to the channel, I probably have another eight or ten clips that I've started on different questions you've sent in. Please send me any questions you have, and I'll make sure that I get whatever questions you have answered, and we'll do tests on it. Uh, the camera's available. I think it's available for pre-order. There's two models out there. There's one with the screen, there's one with the battery, and I've got a clip coming up explaining the difference between them. But if you're interested in it, I've got a link below. If you hit that link, we get a little credit from DJI for you going there and buying the camera. So if you want to support the channel, do that. We also have a link down below for accessories. We've got some Drone Valley accessories that work really well with the Action 2, actually with all these cameras. And we test them ourselves. We build a lot of these accessories in-house because we use this stuff just like you guys use this stuff. So if I see a need, we sit down, we design something, we put it up on the website. And that's pretty much it for today. The last thing I'll say is if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down there because we'd love to have you join the Drone Valley family. I have so much technology we're gonna be reviewing on this channel over the next couple of months. You're not going to want to miss any of it. So if you subscribe and turn on the bell, it'll ding every time we post a clip. If you're interested, come by and watch it. If you're not, just keep an eye on the channel. We'll have something cool coming right after it. And that's pretty much it for today. So thanks very much for watching. Thank you again for all the subscribers and the support you guys have given the channel. Until next time, happy flying. All right, I started the recording on the drone. Let's spin up the props. Man, am I nervous. I have no idea how this is going to go. Didn't go very well. Fell right over. <laughs>